And we will move on to our 6.3, our 907. Consideration of resolution proclaiming the existence of a local emergency due to pervasive tree mortality. And this is uh, Supervisor Paiska's and uh, Supervisor Simon's. And so uh, Supervisor Paiska, I'll go ahead and give the floor to you and, and Supervisor Simon. Yeah, we had a presentation on this last week, but we only have three of us here. Um, I hope you had a chance to watch the videos. Um, we don't have to rehash everything that we talked about. It was a long afternoon. But I do have uh, Mike Jones on the call. He should be on via Zoom. Um, he did prepare another report for us to look at to, um, as we're really examining the evidence and the data. Um, we're lucky enough to have lots of subject matter experts weighing in on this for us. So um, Mike's got a, or Jake has some slides for, um, for Mike to speak on. You, oh, do you do you see Mike in the room? Yeah, I see. Okay, yeah, great. there he is. We don't hear you, Mike. But yeah, good morning, supervisors. Thank you for having me again. Apologies for not being in person. Um, I, I guess I'm here to answer questions, Supervisor Pisco. Whatever you want me to do, let me know. And, and if you want to talk about the document I provided or just general questions about the current mortality issue in Barkweed outbreak, um, I'm, I'm here to answer those questions or talk about that. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, you, could you just um, speak a little bit about the report that you created for us? Sure. So what, what I tried to do was, um, you know, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, not all the supervisors were there last week, so I tried to summarize my presentation into just a basic document highlighting the key aspects of the talk and, and kind of trying to frame where we are currently in, in this uh, Barkville outbreak and, and, and conifer mortality event. Um, we are very much interested as, you know, you all supervisors of Lake County are very much interested in the mortality within your region, but I, I would like to emphasize that this is, this is a North Coast regional issue, right? We're experiencing mortality across the entire North Coast. Uh, aside from Humboldt Del Norte. And uh, the most recent kind of aerial surveys and information coming in is that northern, the northern Sierra is also starting to experience a significant increase in conifer mortality. So this is something that is not specific to the county. We are, we are seeing landscape level um, mortality and Barkville outbreak. So this is a pretty significant event um, uh, and not something that's going to go away anytime soon or anything that's going to be very easily manageable um, in the short term. So I, I just tried to highlight those points in this document to provide some information for the supervisors who missed the presentation last week, but also as a way to summarize what was a, a visual presentation to a, into a Word document. Um, are there any questions? I know I, I doubt you all had a, a huge a chance to go through the whole thing. But I, I guess basically the point is, is that we're at the, well, it's called the incipient stage of the outbreak, which is the initial stages. Um, and frankly, it's, it's just going to get worse from here. It'll, it'll exponentially increase as far as mortality decline through the summer. Um, and the, my expectation based on our knowledge of Barkville outbreaks is that this will probably persist for, for at least a few years. Um, so there's lots of things that you have to think about as far as your management goals and objectives, short-term plan, what you're thinking long-term, and how you're going to deal with, with an abundance of, of dead trees in the landscape. Um, so uh, is there, are there any questions? Yeah, did any of the other supervisors have questions for Mike? I don't have any questions. I think this is definitely something we need to be jumping on. Um, you can see it driving from Kelseyville down to Lower Lake. Um, every time you go by, there's more trees that are dead. And it, it's frightening. It, it, one fire, that's going to go up. And if, if there's winds, how are we going to stop it? So we need to be making sure that we are doing the proper things here to protect our community. Okay, oh, do you have any? Yeah, I think just for me, Jessica, I know um, Supervisor Paiska has done a lot of work. Obviously, uh, I think you just went on the trip last week too with the helicopter. I heard you flying right over the house, so uh, I knew what was going on. So, um, 
you know, as we move forward, when we've been talking about this from the Lake County Risk Reduction Authority uh, and all the opportunities moving forward, you know, we're, we're updating the CWPP, we're moving in those directions to be proactive. And I think just as Supervisor Scott said, you can see it. I just drove from Middletown uh, up to here and from South County all the way through every ridge top you see, we're starting to see uh, the trees dying off. I know um, you know, this isn't an easy conversation, but it's a conversation we need to have and being proactive. I think setting up the opportunity for um, federal and state opportunities for declarations, I think this is where it starts. Uh, I know that we've done a little bit of research in other counties previously and previous years have done it the same way. And sometimes it just has to start at the county level. So I know we've had a lot of conversations. This is, like I said, um, you know, not an easy conversation, but it's the right conversation. So setting this up, um, obviously I'm in favor of it. I see it every day. I get up every morning. The only main, you know, there are a couple of places in the county. You have the Rivieras, you have uh, the South County area, Mount St. Helena, and other things coming over to Napa uh, from the Napa County line. I get up every morning looking at the, the, the tree death and the mortality just in the South County, and it's exponentially increased. Um, I think some numbers we could probably talk about. I think at the beginning of last, uh, the beginning of this year, there was about 220 trees on current property in South County. When we did our last uh, evaluation, we were over a thousand trees uh, in our area. So we're working on, uh, you know, some of those in my current area, uh, but I know that's not all of them. Obviously we have Jerusalem grade, we have Spruce Grove Road, we have all of those. And uh, trying to be proactive, I think, is the right way to do it. Not saying it's going to slow anything down. I clearly hear from uh, Mike Jones it's going to be happening for years. Uh, but we've got to start the line somewhere. And I think it starts here with the Board of Supervisors in this declaration. So that's where I stand on this. And um, I'll continue to you know, support Supervisor Paiska as we're moving through this process. But what we found out, even after the Valley Fire, you know, federal funding is going to be important. State funding is going to be important. We don't have the funds to do the heavy lifting on this. And this is, I think, the path that we need to do this for before the disaster gets here. And uh, it is here now as far as the tree mortality. But what I'm talking about it is a prime example is what's happening in New Mexico right now and other regions that we really try and be proactive. Um, so... That's what I have, and thank you very much. And I wish I could have been here last week, believe me, but I uh, was not in a good place to be here last week. So thank you. Thanks. Um, I actually have another presentation, too, to kind of walk us through the disaster part of this. So um, maybe Joanna can put those slides up. Jake has Or Jake has that. Okay. All right, Jake. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, my pleasure. And, and feel free to reach out, anybody, if you have questions. Thanks. <coughs> So um, looking at what a local emergency means for us um, and looking at the tree mortality issue that we're facing, this is a health and safety issue, wildfire risk, forest health, watershed degradation, loss of wildlife, and we have our economic impacts too, and that's tourism and commercial timber harvest. And those are just two um, examples of how this impacts our economy. Uh, next slide. So the history of how the state dealt with tree mortality um, really was between 2015 and 2018. And 2015 is when the Sierra counties declared their local emergencies. And as I mentioned before, I have been in contact with those uh, supervisors, or one supervisor for sure. Um, we've spoken several times. And then I have another meeting um, in two weeks with one of the supervisors from Tuolumne County, who is now their CAO. Um, picking their brains, trying to figure out exactly what they did um, all through that, those steps. Um, the very first thing that they did was gather their evidence, gather their data, and declare their local emergencies to get the state to realize what was going on. So the, ne the next thing that happened was Governor Brown declared a state of emergency for tree mortality. That state of emergency is still active. The tree mortality task force was formed. They did a lot of work um, that was bringing together all the partners across the state to, um, to deal with this. Cal Fire was part of that, RCRC, Caltrans, a lot of members there. That task force has been disbanded because they felt like they had um, done the work that was necessary in those three years. 
So they also created the tree mortality designation list and all 10 of those Sierra counties were designated high hazard and put on that list. That list is also inactive. That list hasn't been updated since that time because again, this has fallen off everybody's radar. The California Disaster Assistance Act funding, that's still active under Governor Brown's declaration. We talked about that last week. That, um, that provides funding to help with the hazard trees along infrastructure. So that's our roadways, our county infrastructure, parks. Um, that program has a 25% local match. And I have another slide on that in a minute. We can get into that. So during, during this active time, when the Tree Mortality Task Force was active, when that list was active, uh, one of the things that CAL FIRE did was provide that 25% local match through the Cli California Climate Initiative Funds. So that's not available right now, but that is something that we can ask for again. So next slide. So with that Disaster Assistance Act funding, the tree mortality event is still active. Um, the process for applying for that, those funds, is the trees have to be dead and dying and they have to threaten our local infrastructure and public right-of-ways. The first thing that you do is come up with the tree removal plan and that's something our public works would do. We have to assess our financial need. Then all of those trees have to be certified dead and dying by an arborist or some other expert. And then we submit our request. And th that does not require a local emergency with an asterisk because I spoke to quite a few people in the OES office and it's open to interpretation. So there's no reason not to declare the emergency. It's just whether or not whoever's monitoring that program thinks um, you do need a local emergency. But because there's a state emergency, um, most people think you don't need the local emergency, but you, you, you declare the local emergency for yourself, for, for us to identify this as an emergency and a path that we're going to be moving forward on. I'm sorry, uh, Supervisor yes. Paiska, it appears that your presentation is not being shared on Zoom. I see it on Zoom. Yeah, I'm I see not it getting it, uh, I'm not able to to publish it on the broadcast. I, I see it. Yeah. Yes, I'm seeing it on the computer screen that you're seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Um, uh, that's the only place that I am seeing it. Can we take I want, a five minute I, break? Do, do you mind if I check with uh, County Council? Yeah. I mean, what's broadcasted on Facebook is a one-way feed, and so, I, I mean, yes, I want everyone in the public to be able to see it, but it's a one-way feed. At, at the very least, those on Zoom and those here in the public chamber are able to see the presentation and provide comments and remarks. Um, just feel like we can keep going since those that can provide feedback have that availability and can see the presentation and hopefully we can just upload the right video to the other resources that we use so that people can see the entire presentation if it's not being displayed. Zoom is what's listed on the agenda as providing public access. No other no other social media is is listed as being an official avenue. Um, Facebook, as you said, is available for people to listen in, but it doesn't allow for public comment, which is the heart of the Brown Act. They do have this available by Zoom. I think it's up to your board whether you wish to continue. I'm not aware of a legal prohibition here. Well, and if anybody out there um, trying to watch through social media, um, they, they can check back on our video on Granicus too. So I'm, I'll, I'll just move forward. So again... Okay with that? Yes, yeah, sorry. I, no, okay. All right. Yeah, so again, this funding is available, um, but does require that match. And the conversations I had um, is, you know, your county is going to need to figure out if this project is going to bankrupt you. You know, how are you going to come up with that match? 
And that's one of the questions we have to ask ourselves. So next slide. Oh, and just referring to the last slide, uh, last slide we've had our, our, um, our roads manager out assessing roads, and we have thousands of trees in our right-of-way. So that is something that we cannot ignore. Okay, so when we're looking at why would we declare an emergency, because we have public health and safety to protect. And I have that bolded and highlighted because we don't have a choice in that. We have, um, we have health and safety risks. L we're looking at them every single day. We have hazards. Um, and that's something that uh, we owe our, our constituents. The remedies are beyond local capacity. And that's one of the triggers for declaring an emergency or a disaster. We have to officially alert the state to reestablish the assistance that used to exist. And with the task force being inactive, um, no one's really talking about this right now. And I was at, um, well, I'll, I'll say this is just starting to come on people's radars. As um, Mike mentioned, we're starting to see this in the Sierras a little bit here and there, but it's not happening in the ways that it's happening here yet. So at the um, Wildfire and Forest Resiliency Task Force I was at last week, not one word in the four hour presentation on tree mortality. So that tells you that no one's thinking about this or very few people are thinking about this in the way that um, we need them to be. So re we have to re-engage those task force strategies and, and one of those is the CAL FIRE match. Uh, and then we need to update that designation list and we need to make sure that Lake County is designated as high hazard. So in my conversations, there's not one reason to not declare this local emergency, and that comes from Cal OES, Cal Fire, RCRC, and Caltrans. So next slide. Is that Johanna? Next slide. Or who has it? Oh, Jake's got it. <laughs> next slide, Jake. Jake. Maybe you can't do that to that speaker. Sounds was. Oh, I see something happening, but I don't know. No. No. An apparition. You know what? It's on the Google Docs. I think that might be it. You want to take a break? Let's take a five minute break. Well, can we, well, let's can we just, have a conversation yeah. while we're waiting? Um, I mean, we can. On some of the stuff that's already been provided to us, unless you're going to repeat yourself. Oh, there's Jake. All right. He's done. <laughs> so the next slide that. Um, I was going to show um, was from, is from the Wildfire and Forest Resiliency Task Force meeting that I went to last week. This is a task force that's been put together. Um, it ha uh, Secretary Crowfoot is the chair. Uh, Cal Fire is on it. U.S. Forest Service is on it. Um, we have supervisors representing local, uh, local or a large county and a small county. So there's a, there's a lot of representation. There was two panels. The, the whole idea, the whole strategy of this task force is for California to treat a million acres a year of hazardous fuels. And so the knowledge that, that, that no one agency can do this alone, that this is a collaboration moving forward, that everybody has to work together, you know, that's what's being built out right now. <coughs> um, so I had the opportunity to speak with Secretary Crowfoot, um, Cal Fire Chief, Tyler, the new director, and the new deputy director, Chief uh, Anthony, Lisa Worthington from Caltrans, who was on that original task force also, Stacey Heaton was on that task force from RCRC, and Patrick Wright, the task force director. So I stood in a circle with all of these people that were on the original task force years ago and showed them pictures, and those are in my presentation too, 
showed them pictures that I took last week. And every single one of them said, this is exactly what it looked like in the Sierras in 2015. No question. And it was like this weird reunion where they were looking at each other going, OK, here we go again. All right, so it looks like we're back here. <laughs> So the slide, Next one. Um, there you go. yeah, right there. okay. So, so here's the, here are the people that I was talking with about this, and I said there is some hesitancy um, to declare an emergency. And Cal Fire Director Chief Tyler just looked at me and said, "Why? You know, these are the people that have the most experience with this, and they thought they solved it in 2018." And then um, Chief Anthony, who was on that task force, said, given that we're in the third year of um, a dry season and we're starting to see signs again in this year and other places, this is going to probably be exploding statewide. So uh, next slide, please. So these are the pictures I put in front of them. This is Riviera Heights. This was last Wednesday. I just want to point out that um, I had some of our staff run population numbers of what the Canocti corridor looks like in, in the height of summer with uh, all of our uh, permanent residents and our vacation homes. We can have 10,000 people along Canocti, Soda Bay Road and Point Lakeview in the height of summer, which is also the height of fire season. And, and we have this massive tree mortality we're responsible for those 10,000 people. So we have to do everything that we can to keep moving forward to figure out how we mitigate this. So next slide. Can you go back one, please? So that's the Middletown Ranchery in South Middletown. And you can pretty much see it goes as far north into the mountains as you can see and south um, past the rancheria. Next slide. That's Sulphur Creek Road. Um, next slide. That's um, Bottle Rock Road. Those are the stands of knob cones that uh, are literally dying by the thousands. And next slide. That's Cobb Valley where um, there was just a few trees in December and, and now there's hundreds. Next slide. This, um, this is a Fox Drive community, and if you kind of look, there's a green patch kind of in the left-hand top side where the, there's green. Those are the oak trees that have filled in. But that little area, that's where th Clerk has already removed 300 trees, 300 trees from that little spot where you don't see brown on the left-hand side. And PG&E has been out there on the right-hand side taking down several hundred trees. And that's been happening in the last two months. Okay, next slide. So this is the quote that I took from Stacy's email and it said, I won't lie and say this won't be a lot of work. You're already experiencing some of it. It took those first counties a lot of time and effort from putting their local tree mortality task force together to getting the state to really get involved with them. I'm hoping that groundwork will make it easier for you and your county to get Cal Fire and Cal, o Cal OES to jump back in and help. And that's where we're at right now. Like we just, we, we know we need help. We know we have, it's beyond what we can handle. And that's why we need this emergency. Okay. If you have any more questions for me, um, let me know. Go ahead, Supervisor Sabate. So, um Thank you for providing more information this week. I, I feel last week there was not enough information about the Tree Mortality Task Force, their current status. Microphone. Sorry, there was a buzz. Not sure that, uh, where that came from. So uh, I appreciate you bringing more information this week. Last week, uh, I was only aware of the fact that we had access to the uh, CDAA, whatever that um, program is, through the emergency declaration that's already been declared by the state, uh, and that we would have to provide 25%. Um, and I had an email from Sheriff Martin as well as an email from David Billing from Cal OES saying it's absolutely not necessary and maybe, again, you call different people, you get different responses. Um, but every email that I received 
was not about necessarily, I think some people hinted at it, was not necessarily about our road infrastructure, which that would be specifically used for. It was about people's properties. And I started really doing a lot of research uh, around a lot of different areas that did declare these emergencies, that did get some of the funding from the state uh, to deal with their roads. And just about every single one of them in their tree mortality plan. There's no audio on Zoom. Well, that's a problem. Yeah. So let's, let's definitely take a five minute break from this point. Uh, so 945, we'll come back together at 950. Um, that way our, our audio problems will be solved by then and Bruno, <laughs> you'll be able to go to move forward. All right, so are we okay, Sam? All right, I think we are okay. Yes. With that, we will come back to order. We apologize for that delay. Um, we will not be um, broadcasting on Facebook as of right now, but you can look for it later online. They'll post it later. Um, and so right now it's just YouTube, Granicus, and Zoom, of course. And I think Zoom is tied into Granicus. So with that, we'll move on. I think we were at a uh, stopping point. Uh, we had to stop Bruno in the middle of his point, but if you wanted to keep going and start um, from where you start off, you remember exactly where you're at, go ahead. So due to time restraints, I will give a brief summary of my comments. Uh, yes, I'm going to approve this declaration of emergency, but I think that the public needs to recognize the hardest part is to help private property owners. Uh, and this is why I think that the declaration needs to be done to try and find those capabilities of doing so, because what's available right now is not available for you to help yourselves. Uh, and so with knowing that $21 million was spent out of the Tree Mortality Task Force, I think we should add a request to revitalize the Tree Mortality Task Force at the state level. I know we're asking them to delineate us as a high hazard county and put us on the list, but I think we need to also ask for the things that did provide some assistance to our local communities, which includes helping us in our 25% matching. Uh, I also wanna say real quick that I'd love for this conversation to come back again for what is the plan, because we have $2 million of PG&E funds that have not been spent yet, that I think is a perfect use of our public right away monies. I spoke with uh, Scott DeLeon, Director DeLeon from Public Works. He said he counted about 2,000 trees. I believe it was District 5 only. I don't know if it was other districts, but when I asked him to give me an estimate of the entire county, he said just double that. It's at least 4,000 trees. Well, 4,000 times, let's say 2,000 a tree, that's $8 million. 25% is $2 million. We have approximately 2 million. So I think we need to move forward with the plan of how are we gonna take care of our public right of ways and I know that in our last conversation, and not sure if I misunderstood, but that seemed to be kind of the further away plan of uh, something to work towards. But I think that's something that we need to look at uh, right away, and I'd love to have that conversation on what does that look like, uh, rather than just uh, declaring and, and seeing what happens afterwards. Because that money's available to us right now, and we have some of that money to be able to try to utilize the 25%. So um, that's my comments. Yeah, so I'll respond. Um, I did give a presentation on what our strategies are and, and the roadway is only one part of the strategy. Another key point is figuring out how we help the homeowners. So that was part of my presentation last week. That is one of our, our priorities. Um, we don't know what that looks like yet, but we know we have to get there and that's what we're committed to doing. Um, I did bring this up last week that we did have to meet that 25% match. Um, so, the task force, it's not like it's been disbanded. It's evolved into other things. So I don't know that we need to make a request to recreate something that was in the past that's, that has um, kind of morphed into something else. Um, there's a lot happening. There's a lot of attention on this. I don't know that we need to make that demand. But I'm not just putting this emergency out there and waiting to see what happens. I'm in constant contact with all of these people and building this strategy. And I need all of us to be handling this as a team. We all have to be committed because it affects all of us. And so, you know, this isn't a one and done conversation. This is a conversation that we're gonna be having a lot. And we need to figure out um, every, everything needs to be on the table on how we move forward. So I, I feel good about the, present, the proclamation the way that it is now. Um, but we will be defining and refining our asks as we go. 
And my question to you is, is this something the RRA will be taking care of because the tree mortality task force that has been created thus far is at the RRA or does it come to the county? Because I, I would love to be a part of the conversation, especially if we are going to pay 25%. So it's been with the RRA and I um, agree that we need to somehow, the reason I need us all on board is because I can't do this alone and the RRA can't do this alone and we have to have staff involved. And so we have to be able to direct staff to, to help in all the ways and be, inva be involved in every way possible. We have the grant at right, out right now for a chief climate resiliency officer. We don't have that yet. We don't even know if that grant, uh, if we'll get that. So if, we, you know, one step forward, if we don't get that grant, we have to make that higher anyway. We have to build uh, the capacity within our staff to handle this. So all our staff is really, really busy on other priorities. And so how do we... How do, we, um, how do we pull together and get this work done? So that's the work that we have to do. And yes, the county has to play a much bigger role in this than they have. Yep. All right, so with that, is there any other comments from the board? Hearing none, I'll open up to public comment. So if you, uh, if you wanna come up and say something, uh, you have three minutes, um, and let's, let's keep it to three minutes. Uh, I'm, my name is Magdalena Valderrama, and I'm the program manager for the Siegler Springs Community Redevelopment Association. We're based in Loch Lomond. Um, I wanted to um, thank you for uh, even having this uh, topic on the docket. It's very important for the county to step up to um, what we very much need in the community. Uh, as the program manager for SSCRA, I sit on the Best Fits Grant Committee, which is part of the Lake County Risk Reduction Authority. And in that uh, group, which is made of uh, tribal representatives, uh, nonprofit agencies, uh, any county agencies, anyone that has uh, uh, access to grant monies, we sit together, we consider where this grant, where the best, uh, best organization to take on those grants are. I can say that because of the the grant work that I have done over the past five years, um, every single grant that I look at at the state, federal, private foundation level, they're all looking to see what kinds of uh, declarations or, or situations that the county itself has recognized. So um, a declaration of, of a tree emergency would actually help us community nonprofits help to bring more of that money in. One of the examples I can show you is that uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, CAL FIRE declared a brand new, um, uh, the, the legislation went into effect that in order for a county agency to receive funding through any of the five CAL FIRE grant programs, it, they would have to have registered on a list of priority agencies, and that is PRC 4290.1. I went to the webinar, there were 250 people representing organizations and individuals. That's the kind of competition we're on. So now is the time to make that declaration so that we can try and at least keep abreast of this wave if we can't get ahead of it. And that time is now, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the chambers that would like to speak on this? You do, please come up, for, state your name for the record and uh... Hi there, I'm Justine Schneider. Um, sorry, I didn't have childcare this morning. <laughs> this is Serafina. Um, I wanted to speak in support of uh, Supervisor Paiska's resolution. I live up on Cobb, as other people have stated. Um, it's a very visible problem that is growing exponentially, almost you know, by the week. Um, so yeah, I think we're all rightfully very concerned about the fire season ahead of us. I think whatever we can do as a county to get out ahead of that and make sure that um, we're looking out for the safety of our community, I'm, I'm fully in support of and hopefully drawing more resources towards our county so that we can deal with this issue which is well beyond our control. So. Um, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for your attention to this. Thank you. Sir. Sure. 
Yeah, good morning, Supervisors. Jim Comiskey, I'm a lifelong resident of Cobb, and um, I'm on the Board of Directors for South Lake County Fire District. I'm the President of Fire District Association of California, and 43 years as a career fire chief, retired now. I can't tell you how important this is that we declare the state of emergency to access to federal and state funds that's going to help us mitigate some of these problems. And it is, just, just like stated, the corridors are just as important as the single family dwellings. But we got to get on top of this now, get out in front of it. Um, we all went through the Valley Fire, we lived through that. It's going to happen again. Uh, two years ago, there was a fire off of Live Oak Drive that crossed Highway 29. I don't know if you all recall that. I was coming back from Lakeport, and I'm very familiar with the Rivieras as well. So I went Soda Bay Road to try to get to Red Hills Road. By the time I got to Riviera West, it was bumper to bumper traffic. And if we don't think we're gonna have a big, big problem, take a look at Paradise. And with the loss of life up in Paradise when they're trying to evacuate, do you know what one of the, one of the contributing factors to the death on the, on the uh, roads was? A stoplight in Chico. People got out of the area, oh, I'm not in the fire zone anymore. The light turns red, they'd stop. So we don't want to have that. And it's not just a Cobb problem. It's not just a Middletown. It's not just Hidden Valley. It's not the Rivieras. It's this entire county. And I strongly urge you to support the declaration of emergency. Thank you. All right. State your name for the record, and uh, you'll have three minutes. Uh, Mike Shaver, the environmental director with Middletown Ranchery of Pomo Indians. And I won't say much on the proclamation. It seems like there's strong support for that. Uh, but the tribe has been dealing with the same issues at our rancheria. As the chairman and supervisor described, we have over 1,000 trees in our small, part, small area of land. Um, but I do want to draw to your attention the, the need and uh, a continued support of working together as a group. When we, this last spring, we applied for the Cal Fire Fire Prevention Funding and worked with a, a group of t a tribes on that um, application. Um, and, and to deal with <clears throat> many of the priorities on that funding is the wildland urban interface and some of the road infrastructure. The, the <clears throat> larger tree die-offs landscape scale are funded through a forest health funding uh, mechanism through CAL FIRE. And those grants require an area of 600 acres or more to be in the application. Many of those are county and uh, fire safe council groups, a couple thousand acres at a time. So I think that what you're doing today that shows the importance of working together as a community to apply, apply for these large-scale landscape grants that we need to help the property owners and the, and the public lands in our area. Thank you again for your efforts in this. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Elliot Hurwitz. I'm the chair of the uh, Cabrera Council's Forest Stewardship Committee. And I just want to uh, put a little bit of large con larger context. At its April meeting, the Cobb Council adopted our f first kind of community-wide resilience and development strategy, which was kind of a summary of all the things we th were, were learning from having gone through that fire. And uh, it was a comprehensive look at the entire community, including uh, not just the environment, but our economy, our local health, um, the local culture. And I mention this because of all the 25, four, 25 goals that we came out of, the top one, number one thing that, that influences everything in our lives here is the health of the forest. That is, you know, not just our timber, not just our tourism, but every area of our, of our life up there depends on the health of the forest. So um, this is just to call out, you know, how, how critical the forests are for us. So uh, I sent a letter, uh, it didn't get into the formal record that I'll read briefly. I'm urging you to please declare a county emergency due to the epidemic of infested dead and dying trees here on Cobb Mountain and countywide. With fire season fast approaching and drought conditions persisting, the massing, massive and accelerating spread of dead and dying trees now underway is creating tinderbox conditions here. This plague has to be stopped. We know that removing infested trees is expensive, but if we formally declare this emergency, we'll be much more able to access funding to address this issue effectively. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elliot. Hi, everybody. My name is Tom Nixon. I live over in uh, uh, the Riviera, in Kelseyville, Riviera. Um, I've recently been put on the board of CLERC, um, which I'm really proud of to do. I think they're doing a Great job, and I'm glad to be joining their team. I'm going to be on a uh, community outreach committee, um, which uh, which is new as of the last board meeting. And um, you do have a letter of support from Executive Director Will Evans 
regarding uh, this declaration of, uh, of a mor tree mortality um, um, emergency, and I entirely support this along with clerk, and I hope that all of you will too. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Bill Grudy. I'm the president of the Buckingham Homeowners Association. I want to come here to uh, voice uh, my support and our community's support for the uh, resolution that you are contemplating. Um, you've all spoken a lot about the financial benefits uh, potentially of this, but I think there's also a, a soft benefit, a public relations benefit, if you will, uh, being able to underscore the urgency of the situation. It's a help for us as we approach our weed abatement system, uh, syst uh, season, and uh, just in many other aspects of what we do. So I, I thank you for your uh, consideration of this. I urge your support, and uh, thank you. Thank you. just a flyby. Yeah. Hello, I'm Liz Black, and I'm representing um, myself as a realtor, and I'm representing South Lake Fire Safe Council. I've been with them for 11 years. As a realtor, what I know is that people are moving to this county. A lot of people are moving to this county because of economics. Where are these people going to go if they can't come to a place that's going to be safe for them? I've sold a lot of land People do not understand the cost in taking care of that land. They only believe that they need to take care of the defensible space around their home. Now this picture is getting certainly more clear, but what we're hearing through South Lake Fire Safe Council is not just about the chipping program that we run, but what am I gonna do with my dead trees? And this is a constant, constant request from the people in South Lake County and in, in our area. So we have to pass this resolution, not only you know, for the sake of the people right here, but for the people that want to come here who don't have another place to go because of economics. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Briar O'Brien, and I'm a new resident of the River, Riviera Heights uh, HOA. And I'm not used to public speaking, so I wrote down my thoughts, and I'd like to just read them to you. Um, I'm very impressed with the fire safety consciousness I've seen exhibited in the uh, Riviera Heights Homeowners Association by the administration and my neighbors. I have cleared dead and dying trees on my property, and when I'm finished, we'll have spent about $7,000. And little good that will do me when there are dead standing trees on the private land behind me, right on my property line. I know I am just one person, and yes, I am worried about the safety of my individual home, but if this is true for me, surely, um, in Lake County, it must be true for others. I can't be the only one in this situation. I live on the last street of the HOA going up the north face of Mount Canocti. The HOA owns land behind me and there is a trail going up the mountain. I went halfway up the other day, got to a place called the Cliff Walk and I passed through to get there many areas of standing dead trees. At your last meeting, Mike Jones talked about the problem of slash <coughs> left behind after clearing. Well, this isn't slash, but it is debris from fallen trees and broken branches laying stacked on top of each other, looking like a giant fire laid in a fireplace just waiting to be lit. It's exactly what it looks like. And these areas of dead trees, as Supervisor Paiska has pointed out, are not just on Mount Canocti, but they are all around us. In the proclamation, it says, and I quote, 
whereas California Government Code Section 8630 empowers the Board of Supervisors to proclaim the existence of a local emergency when the county is threatened or likely to be threatened by the conditions of extreme peril to the safety of persons and property that are or are likely to be beyond the control of the services, personnel, equipment, and facilities of this county. Surely that is the case now. I ask you to please make this proclamation now before it's too late. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your consideration. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Mariette Peters, and I am the volunteer coordinator for SSCRA, and I live on Cobb. And before I moved to Cobb, um, I worked as a program and grants manager for an international HIV nonprofit uh, for many years, and so I have a lot of experience with uh, federal grants applications and management, and you know, making those go into programs. And um, I just, most of what I wanted to say has already been spoken to, but I just wanted to reiterate, um, thank you for taking this up and taking it seriously. Um, the downstream effects of it will be significant. Um, when these grant review boards are reviewing the thousands of applications that come in from all over the state or the country, to consider like who are we going to give our limited fuel reduction resources to. This proclamation and the fact that this county is taking the tree mortality seriously enough to declare it as an emergency will weigh our applications more heavily than they would be otherwise. So it's really important to increase our um, eligibility and consideration um, for these larger um, grants that will be able to help with uh, fuel mitigation on private lands. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Kathy Andre, and I serve as president of the board for the Riviera Heights Homeowners Association. I thank you all very much for taking this so seriously and for working and I urge you to work together please as we will work with you um, in dealing with this major crisis that we have facing us and I, I spoke at last week's meeting so I'm just going to keep this really short and say when you are looking at voting for this res resolution please keep in mind you're voting for our survival you're voting for our very lives thank you Thank you. And uh, so you're coming, okay. So I have five hands up in the Zoom room as well, so. Hi, I'm Cindy Desar, the Executive Director of Kelseyville Riviera. Do not want to belabor the point at all, but just want to thank you all for taking this seriously. It sounds like we have a good amount of support. And uh, my community, my board as well, is very supportive of the action. And I think in this instance, you know, we as humans kind of always worry about the consequences of our actions. And I think here we need to be worried about the consequences of inaction. And so moving forward, keeping, you know, progressing, keeping on top of these matters as much as we can. So thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Christopher Nettles. I'm the secretary of the Cobb Area Council. And um, I'm delighted to hear from most of you that it sounds like this is a supported proclamation. So uh, hats off to you. I wanna say that also as uh, the proud steward of 160 acres right on the county line on the south side of Cobb Mountain, I look out over my landscape every day and see more trees dying. And, you know, sort of overlaid on top of that, those are trees that survived the Valley Fire. And I can see in my mind's eye them going up in flames. So thank you for supporting this proclamation. Thank you.
Good morning. John Noel here with my wife Karen. A fairly recent transplant to the area. 35 years on the Los Angeles City Fire Department and working throughout the state of California as part of our California Statewide Master Mutual Aid Program. So I've been to an unimaginable number of these incidents that we talk about and moved right smack dab in the middle of the wildland urban interface. What were we thinking? So anyhow, I will tell you that we are uh, incredibly pleased at the effort certainly being made by Supervisor Piska, the Risk Reduction Authority, the folks at Sigler Springs and the South Lake County uh, Fire Safe Council have been phenomenal. If you haven't seen their new book yet on living with wildfire in Lake County, this truly is our Bible for surviving. We also, in our efforts, we've spent thousands of dollars and countless hours trying to prepare our properties, not just for defensible space, because having come from that lifestyle, uh, my biggest challenge has always been defensible by whom. So we truly work on survivable space. And that's what we've been doing for the last several years. We also had a fabulous opportunity to join our local Firewise community and <coughs> acknowledge the incredible efforts that are being made all along the Canocti Corridor, which is where we live also, although we are not in one of those HOAs. So we have uh, historically, we've gone through your documents. You had a fabulous document that was adopted by you in 2009 with your CWPP that specifically identified some critical issues, especially along that Canocti Corridor. And so I, I tell you that just as a historical perspective, and then just when we thought it couldn't get any worse, I suspect that you, like us, would be driving down the road last fall, and we were seeing what we hoped had been an incredible array of fall color. And as we watched, that fall color kept marching down the hillsides until we realized, uh-oh, that's not fall color. That is truly a massive die-up that's occurring because of the bark beetle and the drought that we're in. So there is nothing more critical than you can do right now than declare this local emergency. You know, if you look at your revision that you're currently doing under your CWPP, it very specifically talks about those roles and talks about the roles that OES has, and it talks about zone haven. And I will tell you that having come from the fire service and having been in those initial action hyperdynamic phases of trying to get people out of an area while simultaneously trying to figure out how big is big and how bad is bad is a nightmare. And Zone Haven is a fabulous program implemented by our Sheriff's Department last year to assist with that process. But I gotta tell you that Zone Haven is potentially at a point where it's gonna be compromised and you don't have to go too far to look at Paradise or Santa Rosa or any of the major incidents that occurred that to realize that if we potentially right. implemented Zone Haven, you would find yourself on a corridor on an access or egress route that is truly deadly. And that was before even the you trees occurred. You come to uh, an end. You got your three minutes. So uh, keep in mind that, you know, there is a Soda Bay Corridor route grant that was established Sir, started at your three months minutes. ago. You're at your three minutes. And this would yeah. go greatly towards increasing our opportunity to be successful with that grant. I beg you, give us the opportunity to prepare for wildfires if our lives and property depend on it, because they do. Thank you. Hello, I'm Polly Ann Johnston. I live in Kelsey, rural Kelseyville, and I'm thrilled that you're doing this, and I thank you all. Um, I hope it will continue to be as aggressive as you promised it would be, and thank you, Jessica, for spearheading it. I think one element that is missing is water. Um, maybe that's not included in this type of prevention, but I don't see much going on in terms of water conservation. Um, I'm not sure maybe you are really seriously considering um, new egg adventures, wine growing, um, cannabis, anything that sucks up our precious water we're going to need. I urge you to consider that also. Um, thank you so much. Thank you.
I'm Trudy Wakefield. I live on Cobb, and thank you for this time that you're giving us to be able to talk and share with you our thoughts. I don't know exactly why the trees are dying. I know there's scientists to explain all that, and uh, Jessica, thank you for doing that, explaining that for those of us who haven't done the research. I do have experience with um, two trees falling on our home in 2019. Those trees were alive and quite healthy, actually, but we did have a horrible storm that came through. And if you live on Cobb, you know how windy it can get in a storm. Uh, it was totally destroyed. It destroyed our home completely. I know um, those of you who have lost houses, lost a home due to fires, um, know that destruction, and ours probably wasn't as extreme. We were able to save a few valuables. Um, but I cannot stress enough my concern when I look out my living room window and I'm seeing trees dying. Uh, we have t three trees that have died in the last two years. One we had cut down last year. We have two more to cut down this year. Please understand, I live on a quarter acre piece of land. And that's my responsibility to, to care for. And I'm fine with that. Um, but imagine what's happening on the entire mountain. So I'm concerned. And lastly, I just want to thank you. You know, we voted for you. Here's the public. You're here because you're here to care and serve for us. I know that my safety, the safety of my family and my home and my well-being is your priority. That is why you are here today. That is why we elected you. And I trust that you are taking into consideration everything we're saying, the facts, the research, and that you will make a decision based on our safety. Thank you. Thank you. Here comes the wind carry. <laughs> Wynn Carey, Spring Valley, Wolf Creek Firewise representative. Uh, thank you for doing this. Please follow through with it. I just wanted to say Wolf Creek Firewise started in 19, er, 2019. We have taken close to three to four tons of fire fuel out of our subdivision every year. We're putting in 30,000 man hours to help make our area safer. And I know that the other firewise groups are doing the same. A few years ago, I asked a tree service what it would cost to make a clear pathway on Long Valley Road so the 600 homes could evacuate. $80,000. Needless to say, we don't have that money. So please follow through on this, and thank you very much. Thank you, Wynn. And so we'll go to the Zoom room. It looks like we have a hand up. 707-928-4627, uh, please unmute and uh, state your name for the record and you have three minutes. Good morning, this is Tom Slate. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Tom Slate and Cobb. Uh, I emailed the supervisors yesterday. I hope you all got it and read it. We did. It. Um, it's, it, a lot has been said already. And all the people that are very concerned about it. But I don't know that this has been raised. I'd like to take this opportunity for prevention now. I wonder and question if any help or support get for future. Design. Tom, I think you're breaking up. Uh... Tom, I think you're breaking up. Oh, no, not, not again. Yeah, no, no you want to see, figure out, and I'll, we'll come well, to you anyway, at, after, because I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to be able to hear you, and I want you to be okay, able to be heard. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll move on. If we need to come back, we will. Uh, April Marie, please unmute. You have three minutes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. <laughs> very good, very good. Hi. I hope it's not too loud yeah, or was, too soft. Yeah, okay now. Um, so um, I am uh, hoping that you will pass the Declaration of Tree Mortality. I'm a homeowner in, in uh, the Pine Grove Cobb area that was not burnt. 
Our community has worked really hard at trying to, you know, just our individual neighbors cleaning up, you know, clearing debris and um, and even trees too. Three years ago, I, I we spent four thousand dollars on only eight trees for you know fire prevention and giving away wood as much as we could. Um, we also uh, were grateful to participate in the uh, grant that was the SCC, SSCRA grant, uh, which helped us out a little bit last year uh, in clearing our property. We only have um, three quarters of an acre, but we have 55 plus trees. And uh, last year, one was dead. So we're trying to find you know ways to get that one down. One bid was $5,000. Um, this year, I look up, oh, there's another huge tree that is dead just in one year. And uh, this is in the removal of the, the, um, the wood after it's taken down is a big deal. And it's really hard. Nobody really needs firewood around here to give away. It would be wonderful if we could. But uh, the grant helped. And... Um, I'm so glad to see that there's so many people who are really con concerned about this, it's not just me. There's, uh, I'm, I'm feeling sad for the trees, but uh, we do need to look out for our safety. And I thank you for your uh, participation and uh, hopefully this declaration of tree mortality will pass and we will open up some fundings to help some, um, not only for our roads, but also for the homeowners and many of you were very wonderfully verbal uh, today, telling about everything. But um, we need a little bit. Of, little, we need a little bit of uh, help there too, because homeowners usually don't have five thousand dollars a tree to to uh, take things down, but uh, and to keep our community safe. I just wanted to add my voice out there and thank you very much for your time. Thank you, uh, Betsy Kahn. If you can uh, unmute, you have three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, of course, support this uh, effort, and I've been uh, listening intensely to all of the speakers. My comment is that I have not yet heard any good reason not to pass the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Betsy. Uh, phone 7257. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Good morning. Thank you. This is Bart Levinson. Um, a few days ago, I drove from Kitts Corner to uh, Lower Lake and down to Middletown. Um, I have been seeing uh, over the last year so many trees dying along that pathway. Many are hanging over the road. They're already hanging over the road. And in a fire, we are all going to depend on these routes. We have to know that we will be safe along these routes. And at the moment, it doesn't look at all safe. I, I just beg you, please, to do a survey of the main evacuation route corridors uh, and see uh, what trees urgently have to come down to prevent a major disaster like paradise. Thank you. Thank you. Patty Lanier, Noble Gardens, if you can unmute and uh, state your name for the record and you have three minutes. Hi there, can you hear me okay? Yes. Excellent. Hi, my name is Patty Lanier and I am a local, uh, one of your local cannabis farm licensees and a landowner. I own 45 acres uh, split between two parcels in South Lake County in uh, uh, Simon Moak's uh, district. And I just want to thank you for taking this item up. 
Um, our little district here uh, in, that is nestled between the two entrances of Spruce Grove Road um, on that nine mile loop, this area hasn't burned, I think since 1995. And uh, myself and uh, Julianne Lewis and another woman, Carol Littlefield, worked feverishly over the last two years to create and bring our small little sector on Noble Ranch Road into being a FireWise community. And as part of that, we have brought together um, all of the residents here to start a chipping program to give better access on the only access road that is serviceable for uh, our residents in this little area to be able to escape in the event of a fire. We have one that goes through a vineyard that we hope the vineyard will unlock the gate on the back side, um, on the southeast side of the community. But truly, the only real escape route is through Noble Ranch Road and down Spruce Grove Road. Some people have four and a half, five miles to travel on a dirt road in order to escape a fire. This area is an absolute tinderbox. On my five acre parcel around my home this last winter, I have felled 16 trees on a five acre parcel and there are still more that I could really take down, but they're not in the immediate area right around my home. On my 45, on my 40 acre parcel around the occupied area that we utilize for cannabis, which is the fairly small sliver of land, I have 26 trees to cut down. Throughout the entire mountainside here, it's countless. It's absolutely horrifying when I stand up on, my, on the perch on the rocks to get a vantage point to look over um, the, uh, the uh, Jerusalem grade area. We, we are southeast facing. So you've got a lot happening. You've heard a lot about what's happening over on the Cobb side, on the northwest side of the community. It's also encroaching as you look out over Mount St. Helena. We are surrounded by matchsticks standing up, waiting for some embers to come. I am so happy that you guys are taking this item up. Please, please, please vote to pass this and get us the emergency funds that we need to bring down some of this vegetation, to bring come to embers a, into communities. Here are three minutes. To bring in, okay, to bring in possibly permaculture experts who might be able to help us understand that even laying these trees and logs down on contour of the mountain, you don't even have to take the big logs out if you just chip the, the branches. Um, there are ways okay. to make this more we're, we're way past operation three minutes. if you can consult to an end, please. who have a better understanding of, of how to All right. utilize um, these. We're going to go on to 4627, phone 4627. Um, did they speak already? I don't think so. Yes, if you can unmute, uh, you have three minutes. I broke up earlier. Can you tell me, am I getting through all right? You're better, yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. if you can, uh, okay, let me yeah. Go ahead. Well, once again, thank you, Jessica and Clerk, and so many people, and all the speakers today. This is so heartfelt, I think, from a lot of us. Uh, I wrote a short email to the supervisors uh, yesterday. I hope you all read it, and it's short, and I was going to read it, but I'll just bring up one point that I haven't heard, one sentence. If we fail to take this opportunity for prevention now, I wonder and question what, if any help, we will get or support from such as the state and federal would we get for any future disasters? I think that's a really important question. Thank you very much, and thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, can I answer that yeah. question? I, I had that conversation with OES. Um, and, you know, typically when there's an event, you have 10 days to declare a disaster. Um, if you don't do it in that period, then you're, you're ineligible for support from the state and the federal government. So obviously this, this is a, a different sort of disaster. We don't have a 10 day window because it's been um, happening slowly um, and spreading. It is something that I have been discussing for months. Um, so I, I agree with, with you, Tom. Um, there, would, there could potentially be a time when we would um, not be able to access support if we did not have this in place or if we chose not to pass it. 
All right. With that, I think we've covered everybody on uh, Zoom as well. So uh, with that, I'll close public input and bring it back to the board for action. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I just want to say a, a couple of things. I'm really grateful for everybody um, showing up today and um, sharing your stories. Uh, we have subject matter experts that have been helping with this, that have been studying this. We have the empirical knowledge from all of you who are sharing your experiences on your lands and in your communities. Um, one of the things that was discussed uh, at the task force meeting last week when we we're talking about how do we get to that million acres a year to, to treat in California um, when we're having to deal with all these grants. And yes, this will help make the grants that we have out more competitive. Um, but, but what we're hearing from this task force and coming down from the state is, is a, a transition to block grants. And that's what will help um, regions like ours and counties like ours be able to have access to that funding and make the decisions. One of the things that I brought up to them was, we have a dynamic landscape. This is changing daily, and, and that's not normal. That's not normally how landscapes change, but it's happening here, and we have to have the agility to be able to reprioritize quickly. And so that's the conversation that I had with um, CAL FIRE Director Chief Tyler. Um, and, and he's in agreement, and I, I had that conversation too with uh, Supervisor Gore, who is one of the representatives on the task force representing counties. So um, the, the model right now of going after grants um, is, uh, is kind of gilling all of us. <coughs> Our nonprofits are struggling, uh, we're struggling, and then we're waiting a long time. Like we applied for that evacuation corridor grant in December, and we thought we would hear in February, and we still haven't heard. So um, I, I think the mentality is shifting. Um, this is going to help. I'm going to be following up um, with everybody I spoke with last week, later on this week, um, with this proclamation and with the more specific asks that we have. So um, I don't know if you have any more comments, but I'm... Supervisor Simon, looks like he does. No, you know, obviously, like I said from the beginning, uh, being proactive. So uh, I do also want to discuss, it was mentioned by our EP director of Middletown Rancheria about collaboration. Um, you know, there are seven tribal nations here that are available for also uh, federal funding that may be able to help. Um, I think each one of us can't speak for all of them, but I know Middletown will be uh, talking about doing a declaration of our own uh, in, in the area here. And I think the collaboration is really the important thing. So not only do we have the county stepping up, but we have all the other governments, the federally recognized governments, and hopefully potentially the, the cities at least to have these conversations as we are doing. Uh, the, the RRA brought everybody together to start the conversation. Jessica really spearheaded it. And I think we're moving in a good position. I really look at this as an opportunity for the county to collaborate with the tribal nations, uh, the real stewards, original stewards of the land here in uh, you know, California and the United States and really help move this thing forward. You have Terra, you have a lot of different organizations We started with Robinson that is really taking off um, and will continue to do that. And I really look at it as the same aspect we just did. I know we did support letters from tribal nations for um, the project we have in your district, yeah, right. uh, which is definitely going to help. So I think this will also open up another avenue for federal funding uh, to help come through the area. So I know we don't own uh, at least the tribal governments don't own a lot of land, but collaboration and communication with our partners is very important to us. So I'm excited about the opportunity. And I also want to, you know, I've heard a lot of folks talk, we talk about it, uh, the personal landowners and property owners. It's going to take time. This is just a beginning step. Uh, the, the gates will not open immediately, but this is beginning to kick the door open and, and start that process and the conversation because we all know how challenging it is. Here at this board, we wrote many letters after the Valley Fire and the continuing fires uh, to look for federal funding and opportunities to get the dead trees, the burnt trees down. And as you know, there are still some out there. So we know it's going to be challenging, but we've got to take those efforts and to continue to move forward in that way. So, uh, now, I, I just want to thank you for bringing this to the board because, um, you know, just a lot of it at first when you're thinking about tree mortality, you're like, what, what is that? And then all the presentations are given that. I know being on the uh, RRA, I've heard Mike Jones talk about it before. 
And so um, I'm just, I'm glad to see everybody on board with this. You know, all of our comments are, pro, you know, want to support this. And uh, it, it, I'm just a little, um, what do you call that? Uh, uh, gun shy or jaded, I'm worried, I'm looking for arguments and there's none, you know, there is none. And uh, I'm just glad it's a tree and not a human because I hear all the arguments about a human if they're, if they're sick, <laughs> we're dying. So yeah, that's all I have, thanks. Okay, I offer the resolution. Resolution has been offered. Um, Supervisor Simon? Yes. Supervisor Sabatier? Aye. Supervisor Scott? Aye. Supervisor Paiska? Yes. And Supervisor Crandall? Aye. Thank you. All right.